There it is. That's the weather balloon right there. It's all over the news. And it's not the moon, because the moon is right there. There it is. What is up, guys? It's Andy Purcell, and this is the show for the realists. Say goodbye to the lies, the fakeness, and delusions of modern society. And welcome to reality, guys. Today, we have Andy and DJ Cruz the Internet. That's what we're going to do. This is Cruise the Internet. That's why it's called CTI. Uh, what we do is we cruise the Internet. We put up headlines on the screen. We talk about them. Uh, we talk about what's true, what may not be true. We make fun of them. We have a couple laughs. And then we talk about how we, as society, us, have a duty and an obligation to solve these problems and how we can do so. Other times when you tune in, we have multiple formats of the show. You're going to find that we have a Q&A F episode. That's where you get to submit questions and I answer them. And you could submit those questions too. Guys, as always, email those questions in to askandy at andyforsella.com. Or you can drop them in the comments underneath the YouTube episodes. For those of you that don't know, we are uploading full episodes on YouTube uh, right now, and if you drop the comment of the, if you drop a comment underneath Q and A F episode of what question you want to ask, we can pull them from there as well. Um, other times we have real talk. Real talk is just five to twenty minutes of me giving you some real talk, and then other times we have full length. And full length is, you know, I have my interesting, uh, successful guests come on here, and we talk about what's going on, and that's kind of the show. Uh, in exchange for the value that we provide on the show, if we provide value. Okay, sometimes we may not, but if the show made you think, if it gave you some good information, if it taught you some things, if it helped you, if it inspired you, if it helped you in your life, please share the show. Okay, we don't run ads for the show. I don't pump this shit everywhere. We do entire, uh, our entire traffic strategy is based off of word of mouth, which I like. Okay, so if I do a good job, tell someone about it. That's pretty much it. Um, what else? What else am I missing? Oh, uh, if you are interested in Arate Syndicate, Arate Syndicate Applications, which is my entrepreneur group that I co-founded with Ed Milet, um, it is the best entrepreneur group on the planet. It is for real entrepreneurs, not internet fucking pretend entrepreneurs. This is real people on real businesses. A lot of you guys message me all the time. And you're like, well, oh, I can't find anybody that I align with. All my friends are this and this and this. How do I network? Well, being a part of a group like this will not only help you learn things, but more importantly, it puts you in contact with real people who are doing real things in real life and opens up a Rolodex for you. And I don't know a lot of you young motherfuckers don't know what a Rolodex is, but basically it's your contact list of a bunch of people who can help you get where you're trying to go. That's what Arte Syndicate is. We only own, uh, open up applications uh, a couple times a year. Not everybody gets in, but if it sounds like something you're interested in, uh, applications are open right now. Now, this could be for anybody. This can be for day one. This could be for a billion dollar company. It doesn't matter. We intentionally mix the group so that we have people inside the group all helping each other along the path. So don't feel like you're not good enough to be in it. And also don't feel like you're too big to be in it because I guarantee you there's motherfuckers that are bigger than you in this. All right. So it's a great group. They're all aligned. They all want to succeed, but most importantly, they want to be the best uh, example for what the good shit in the world looks like, okay? This is a group with a mission. We are here to do good, to be purveyors of good shit, to facilitate good change. And the entrepreneur culture that you have in your business is actually what changes society, which we talk about a lot in Arte. But anyway, I'm not going to you know, go on and on and on about it. The point is applications are open. If you want to apply, apply. If you don't apply now, you won't get in until the next time they're open, which I think is in the middle of summer. So you guys DM me all the time. When's it open? When's it open? When's it open? It's open now. So go apply. Full transparency. Um, I had no idea what a Rolodex was. I didn't know it was called that. Really? Yeah, I just had to look, look it up. Yeah, did you see what it looks I'm like? like? I'm that young motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, it's like your black book. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's I've like, seen it. Rolodex just... is, a, is an actual item yeah. that you used to be able to like, it would be on someone's desk and it rolled mm -hmm. and it had everybody's contacts in it. You mm -hmm. know, most of these people are nowadays, they don't really know what it was like before cell phones, right? Yeah. So, yeah. It's hard times back then. I mean, I think it was a lot better times because yeah. uh, 
the, if you, to win, you had to be actually great. To do shit, you had to be great. To do shit, you had to actually do shit. Yeah. Nowadays, you get enough credit for just talking about doing shit. So I actually like it better back fact. Yeah. And I think business is going back that way, to be honest. Yeah. I think a lot of people are rejecting technology. I think a lot of people are deleting their Instagrams, deleting their fucking uh, apps off their phone. They're realizing that it's a time suck, that it's a fucking jail, and that they don't need to spend their entire lives glued to an app that some billionaire made uh, and pretend to live when in reality we're supposed to live out here in the real world. Yeah, and I think people are starting to wake up to that. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's great. And what? And I'm really excited about it because I think business is going to trend that way as well. I think we're going to see more opportunities for businesses that won't necessarily be based on the internet or social media and will now be based at brick and mortar real life again, which takes an entirely different set of skills to run. And I'm excited about that because there's less competition because people have forgotten how to do those things. Mm -hmm. But guess who hasn't forgotten? <laughs> What's that guy's name? Yeah. Randy Quinswella. <laughs> like I had to fucking do that shit. Like yeah. we people don't like when I talk about what we had to do in the beginning days of business, bro, people fucking act like it's like, holy shit, man. That wasn't that long ago, dude. You guys have just been spoiled for a while. Mm. And now we're getting to a situation where the customer base is starting to detach from technology. They don't want to go on the metaverse. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to go to web three. They're not trying to buy real estate in the fucking metaverse and like all this shit you motherfuckers are trying to push on them. They're not doing it. They're going to real world. And I could tell because I own brick and mortar businesses and I could tell you what sales are. They're the best they've ever been. And when you pull the customers and you ask them why they're shopping with you, uh, they're going to tell you, well, we want to support real American jobs, real American businesses, real people in real life. And people are getting back to that. And I yeah. think it's exciting time for business because of that. Yeah, that's for sure. You know, we have two polarities. We have, you know, a lot of companies going towards all tech, all automation. And then we have companies that are pulling back and concentrating on the people. And it's a gamble both ways, right? It's not really because the people, people are always going to want to do business with people. Mm. And I think people are starting to recognize as a whole how difficult um, and damaging technology is actually making our lives. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's books out there like The Chaos Machine where people are actually reading it. They're starting to realize that these people who own these social media companies are not uh, satisfied with just being some of the richest people on the planet. They're actually trying to enslave and capture our entire lives on their fucking technology, which is wrong. Yeah. Yeah, that's a fact, man. You know, you think back to Instagram, bro. Instagram used to be fun. Instagram was a fun place back in the day. It's not fun anymore, bro. It's just a bunch of fucking trolls. It's a bunch of fucking bullshit. It's a bunch of drama every day. People get their fucking views and their likes from chasing clout and tearing other people down. Like, it's become a toxic atmosphere and people just don't like it. Yeah. And so... You know, people are being more selective about where they choose their time, uh, choose to spend their time, who they want to spend their time with. And they're doing it with people who in real life who are of like mind. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's another reason why our taste syndic is so cool because we get together in person. You meet these people. It's and not some, some badass fucking, fucking events and yeah. get some great, great memories, man. It's real. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, dude. But, you know, I, I talked about this, you know, two, three years ago that the trend was moving away from the global corpse and back towards uh you know real human american owned businesses at least here in the united states people are being selective with their money they're learning that if they're selective with their money they actually can facilitate change in the culture of how things are propagated to them propaganda will never stop but what they propagate to you will change if you are selective with how you spend your money and that's happening now and people are starting to move back and like that's why you're seeing a lot of these layoffs with a lot of these big ass companies but if you check in with the small business and you check in with the small shops and this and that business is going fucking great yeah yeah for sure speaking of propaganda we were on a we did a cardio walk earlier mm -hmm. we had a little interesting encounter yeah that was weird dude and uh <clears throat> this is friday when we're recording the saturday when you guys are listening um but propaganda the, the weird part about we so it's we i have no explanation for it right yeah so tell them what happened well i mean so we're, we're out on a cardio walk and then out of nowhere this like really i tried to do a video of it didn't do justice it yeah. was a loud ominous fucking like thunder rolling thunder fucking yeah, but sound. it didn't stop and it was going for like i mean it was probably like 20 seconds yeah it was probably like 10 seconds after i you know before yeah. i started recording and like we could, you know, we were seeing where it sounded like it was coming from, but there was nothing going on over there. There was yeah. no movement. There's no planes. Nothing. It sounded like a like a low flying like military 
jet. Yeah. You know, like a like a fucking F-18 or something like that. Something big. Yeah, something it, it was with big. a lot of power. Yeah. And that's what it sounded like, except there was no airplanes. There was no smoke. There was no... And, there was and it, it sounded like it was coming from the ground. Yeah. Well, so it's interesting you say that. Because an hour, not even an hour after that cardio, this article comes out uh, saying Arctic blast could trigger a rare weather phenomenon. Frost quakes. Well, dude, I've I've is that been a real in, thing? I've been in some real earthquakes, some medium sized earthquakes, and yeah. that's actually what the fuck it sounded like. Now, th- yeah, now thinking about, it, I'm like, yeah. all right, you know, okay, you know, and they're they're saying that uh, that these 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 are happening in the Northeast New England area this weekend um, because of all the cold air that we have, the changes in temperature. Frost quakes, also known as ice quakes or uh, cryoisms are seismic events caused by a sudden fracturing or cracking action in frozen ground, soil, or rock that is saturated with water or ice. It's possible. And they're also predicting, um, it says uh, they're most likely to, uh, to happen or susceptible to happen in Canada and North- northern states. Um, frost quakes have been reported in recent years in Connecticut, Massachusetts, Maine, Vermont, Michigan, Wisconsin, Ohio, Indiana, and Missouri. Yeah. So, well, dude, you know, like, it, was that a frost quake, bro? I don't know. It, <laughs> dude, it felt like it, it felt like an earthquake. Yeah. Like, that's what it felt like to me. And that's what it sounded like, too. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You know I just, we get the, we get some of those medium sized earthquakes here. Yeah, we're on a fault years. line. Yeah. yeah we do have that. a fault we're line here. New, New Madrid fault. Yeah. It's actually one of the most powerful fault lines in the whole world. I must say, though, what was the last one? I think it was, I remember it was 1906. Like 2000, well, we had one a, in 2007, big, didn't we? It was like nine, early 1900s. It was in 1906. Yeah, they had a big one, and actually the, the earthquake actually rang church bells all the way from Missouri and Boston. No shit. Mm-hmm. It's one of the most powerful fault lines in the whole world. Jeez. Yeah, right here in Missouri. But like, we get we don't get like these big ones. We get a, we get like these little ones, mm, like consistent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> that that is what it sounded like to me. Hmm. Yeah, I've never heard of a fucking ice quake. But it sounded like it was like right there. Yeah, it was it, it was, was weird. weird, man. Super weird. I didn't shit. feel anything though. No, the gra- that's what I'm saying. Yeah. The ground wasn't shaking. Like, it sounded like it was like probably like 10 feet above ground. Mm-hmm. It was just weird. Yeah, man. it was weird. Super weird. Yeah, so I didn't know if that was just propaganda, if they're trying to feed us some bullshit or not, or if they're yeah, testing I don't fucking, I don't know. I thought it was, I thought it was you, you having to take a shit. Dude, I, I thought that was you having to take a shit. No, bro, that was you. <laughs> that was, you're the one that fucking sets up shop for four hours. <laughs> hey, man, don't be telling my black people secrets, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, it is CTI. Yeah. It is CTI. And uh, there Let's are move beyond uh, phantom earthquakes and DJ's <laughs> bowel movements. <laughs> so you know it's going to be a good show. Yeah. Uh, guys, remember, if you want to see any of these pictures, articles, links, go to andyforsella.com. You can find them linked there. Uh, also, check it out down in the uh, description below. With that being said, headline number one. Headline number one reads, walking advertisement for why the left is full of crap. Socialist Bernie Sanders is labeled a hypocrite for charging $95 per ticket to attend an event promoting his new book, It's Okay to Be Angry About Capitalism. So, <laughs> can't make this shit up, man. So this is a Daily Mail Bro, article. they're f- fucking trolling us. <laughs> Capitalism's so bad. Yeah. I'm paying me $100. Like, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, this shit writes itself, man. Bro, th- these people don't care. Like, they don't care how big of a hypocrite they look like. They don't. Anyway, keep going. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, he, he, uh, the art, this Daily Mail article, it reads, uh, Bernie Sanders has been play, uh, labeled a hypocrite for charging up to $95 a ticket to an event promoting his new book about capitalism. The senator, who's 81, worth about $3 million, by the way, uh, is prepping uh, his drop, uh, his newest book titled It's Okay to Be Angry About Capitalism on February 21st, which retails for about $28. Um, like many authors, the Democratic Socialist is hosting an event following its release at the Anthem in Washington, D.C. on March 1st, with tickets ranging from $35 to $95. All tickets, $55 and above, will come with a copy of the book. So that's good. Um, but everybody's hitting them up. They're lighting them up on Twitter. Uh, somebody says, anyone else see the irony in Bernie Sanders selling tickets for its It's Okay to Be Angry About Capitalism book? Um, Greg Gutfeld on Fox, he he lit him up. I liked his comment. So he says, yeah, quote, for once. Yeah, right. He says, quote, he said, bro, the you ticket- need a new Greg Gutfeld, Gutfeld, bro. Like, let me be real, bro. Like, I don't know if it's the fucking, the, the way your show is supposed to be, but you guys need a new joke writer. Like, I ain't fucking playing. 
<laughs> like motherfuckers, like you, you is that how it's supposed to be? It's supposed to be Seinfeld ish. Is that what it is? Seinfeld. Like Cause the, I don't like Seinfeld humor. No, I think Seinfeld humor is fucking ridiculous. Yeah, I agree. Ooh, I can't even do it. <laughs> like, cause it's not funny. Like I never understood the fucking, like the, <clears throat> the appeal of that television. Like the show. hard punchline jokes. Yeah. They aren't hard punchline. It's just like it's just like the sarcastic, apathetic attitude yeah. that like infects people. It's just I'm just not wired that way. Like yeah. I'm not a I'm not a cynical person. So like the humor doesn't stick to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I I like to believe I have a pretty good sense of humor. I I, I would agree with that. Yeah, it's just not like I'm more of a Richard Pryor. Yeah, you know okay. what I'm saying? George Red Carlin. Fox, some Red Fox. Fucking Eddie yeah. Murphy before he was doing kids movies. Bernie Mac. That's right. Yeah, got That's you. where I'm at. That shit's funny. Let's get, Jam. I let's, got you. let's get a fucking comedy. Let's get a fucking nighttime political show with Eddie Eddie Murphy acting like Eddie Murphy. Yeah, right. All right. Let's right, do none that. Of that Dr. Doolittle shit. Yes. None of that fucking family <laughs> friendly bullshit. I'm talking about the real shit. <laughs> hey, boy. <laughs> right. Look at my defining them jeans. <laughs> you don't know that one. I have no idea. Yeah. Well, he's was. doing this impression of Mr. T, which is phenomenal. You should look it up and plug it right in here because it'll make you fucking <laughs> laugh. All right. Hey, boy. Hey, boy, you look mighty cute in them jeans. I don't know if it's raw or delirious, but it's those two, dude. One time, I, this, this is how fucking stupid I am. So uh, I had a girlfriend back in college who, was, who English was like her fucking fifth language, okay? <laughs> and, uh, and like, dude, I, I had her over to the house, and uh, I'm thinking like, okay, well, I'll have her over. We'll watch a movie. It'll be great, you know? So I fucking rent Eddie Murphy raw, okay? Not okay. thinking that, like, there's no chance that she's going to fucking understand she, one fucking word that he's saying or one joke. Right over saying. her head. Yeah, but I didn't care. I sat there and laughed my fucking ass off, bro. <laughs> I laughed my ass off. I look over, and she'd be, like, sitting there, and I'm like, well, fuck it. <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> yeah, but I, I didn't I, even I, think I, about it. Yeah, no, hey. Shit's funny. It's funny to me. That's why yeah, I'm that's laughing. It. Yeah. I had a great time. It's like that's like half of my jokes. Yeah, that's right. I'm fucking laughing. That's yeah, all that matters. I know. Well, they they would be funny if you didn't tell people about them before you told them. Yeah, that's true. We are, we've been trying to. I'm break still working you on it. Man. I know, bro. Still working on. Well, it. you're still young. You got time. Maybe me and Greg can get together and consult on some shit. Y you know what? I like this the one was good. I know. I like the show. I'm not hating on the show. Yeah. I'm just saying, man. Like some of them dudes, they're not that funny. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. At least even, not even Tucker sometimes he has a little bit of that in him sometimes sometimes he's not a comedian I actually think it's funny as fuck when Tucker starts like really like being like laughing at that shit laugh, yeah, that laugh yeah, yeah like, he has a good it's laugh. real yeah now but I like what Greg, uh, Greg Gutfield said he says quote he said the tickets should be free or at least force the audience to pay for the tickets of the other half he crept on the show uh, he says or quote uh, or maybe more like 20% should pay for the remaining 80%. So the prices are like 500 per person and everyone else is free. Uh, then the people that paid the 500 have to be next to the eight people that did not pay at all. I, th I thought that was, uh, dude, it reminds I mean, me of AOC bro, shit. Well, yeah, they all do it. Yeah. AOC's got a sweatshirt right here. Tax the rich. It's 58 fucking dollars, bro. <laughs> As complained about on Fox News. As, <laughs> dude, it's kind of funny. It is kind of funny. It is kind of funny. Oh, man. These people are so full of shit. Like, yeah. they really are. I just thought that was hilarious. Yeah, well, you know, why is the book, why is the book cost any money? If, if socialism is such a great idea, why can't you just get the book for free? I think that's a great idea. Bernie should figure out a way to make, you know, like, if you're so <laughs> about socialism, bro, um, you should... Figure out a way to make it work so that you can give the book away for free. Right. See, yeah. the problem is you fucking idiots don't know the difference between socialism and capitalism, and you fucking don't understand that you can't make shit free. That's mm -hmm. not how the fuck it works. Nothing and in any free. situation where you do have free shit, it means that somebody who's very, very fucking poor is producing it, and they're pro being pro it's being produced by force. Yeah. Like, bro, capitalism is the way to fucking world, man. Uh, entrepreneurs are the people who create jobs. Entrepreneurs are the people who solve problems in their communities. Uh, you know, you don't see the fucking Bernie Sanders donating millions of dollars to their own community and building all this shit, bro. They don't fucking do it. These people are just totally full of shit. Yeah. And they don't care how easy it is to see anymore. They don't care. that they, they, it's, it's total demoralization. It's demoralization of all of us. Like, they don't care 
if you see the nefarious, hypocritical, ignorant shit that they do, they don't care. They don't care because they think, well, you're not going to do anything about yeah, it. Yeah, because we haven't. No, well, we, we can't because the law is only fucking applies to one side of, of the people. Yeah. If you're, on, if you're on the progressive left side, you can do whatever the fuck you want. You could burn, burn police cars. You could march in the streets. You could burn your fucking city down. You can do whatever the fuck you want. You're not held accountable. You got all these uh, prosecuting attorneys all over the country in these Democrat cities who won't prosecute people who are shooting people in the fucking face, shooting kids. So if you're one of them, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Like, bro, the, the law needs to apply to everybody. And, and we don't have that right now. And you police officers, especially the officers up the chain, you need to start putting pressure on these fucking on these fucking prosecutors to prosecute the crime, bro. People in your town on your watch are getting killed because your prosecutors won't fucking prosecute the actual violent crime. That's your fault. Oh, I can't do anything. My hands are tied. Okay, so people are just going to die? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right. Like, dude, there's a lot going on here, and it's a lot of bullshit. And fuck Bernie Sanders. <laughs> I'm being real, dude. Yeah. Like, you fucking idiots that fucking like this dude, you don't know shit about anything. Like, you guys think you're going to live in this utopia where everything's fucking free. You know? Yeah. There's a whole book about this. You can read it. It's called Atlas Shrugged. It's one of the greatest books ever written. But basically, I'll summarize it to you in fucking two seconds. Uh, when you get enough people who are profiting and living off of the people that produce, meaning right now, we have a 50-50 split in America. We have 50% of the people who aren't fucking contributing and we have 50% of the people who are contributing. They do have jobs. They're paying taxes. And those tax dollars are then used to float this fucking lifestyle for these people who root for this fucking idiot, okay? And they think it's free. It's not free. Some of us are out here working our fucking asses off so that we can be taxed at a higher percentage than we actually get to take home so that you could sit on your ass and fucking do nothing. With just that's enough left over to that's where we can get that, done That's that why one of the election reforms that needs to happen, and I don't know that this will happen, but it needs to happen, is that only people who have a current fucking tax return, who have paid taxes and are current, can have a vote when the votes come around. Mm. Because what you're creating is a scenario where you have enough people who, who aren't contributing where they still get the vote. And this is why the Democrats continue to push this... Uh, you know, anybody can vote. You know, you don't need an ID. You could, yeah. be, you could be an illegal immigrant. You could do all these things. The reason they want that vote is because they're trying to get the number of people who don't contribute in the, in the economy to a point that's over that 51%, right? So that way, whenever they do have votes- It's a majority. Yes, yeah. they're getting the majority. So they're voting for all their policy. But the problem is that's what happens right before the fall. So what ends up happening past that point is that the people over here that are producing see what's going on and they're like, fuck it, I'm not producing shit. And then the government says, no, you are. You are going to produce shit and you're all going to produce shit. And then what happens is these people who are in the 51% that voted the shit in who don't want to work, they say, well, fuck that. We're not doing that shit. You know what they do with those people? Kill them. They fucking kill them. That's what communism does. So all of you that root for Bernie Sanders, all of you that fucking, you know, you think you're virtue signaling, you're really fucking smart and it, all this shit, figure out how to write a book and give it a, 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 on socialism and give it away to everybody for free without any fucking money. And that'll be your litmus test for if it works. It doesn't fucking work. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, very interesting. Well, that was, uh, that was headline number one. Let's scooch on over to headline number two. Now, I do have, a, we've talk, we talked about this on the episode with Pete from Origin. There's ethical capitalism. There, yeah. You should be ethical about it. Well, bro, if, the, if greed gets allowed in, it can corrupt. Well, and it does. Yeah. It does. But yeah. that's also the consumers that should look at those companies where they're spending their money and ask themselves, uh, is this company running an ethical entrepreneurship or exactly. ethical capitalism program? No. Yeah, those are fucking like, and that's the, that's the thing, bro. They support the companies who are the most guilty of it, bro. The biggest ones in the world and people have no problem. They'll fucking trash a company like mine or some, yeah. a small business you fuck up one time. It's over. Yeah, and yeah. fucking fuck you. You guys are pieces of shit, but they'll go buy the company's shit without even thinking about yeah. it. That literally enslaves them. Yeah. Amazon's fucking clearing out fucking villages and shit for warehouses. Like, bro, that's they, <laughs> yeah, but your but your local businessman who's trying to do whatever does one fucking thing you're dragging them across the internet that's what they want you to do yep. Yep. that's the purpose of cancel culture 
The purpose of cancel culture is to protect them and destroy us. And fucking us are the people who propagate it and perpetuate it and actually do the destroying when we're all on the same fucking team. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Well, guys, that was headline number one. Let's, uh, let's move over to headline number two. Headline number two reads, Hunter Biden lawyers concede the data is his. Question laptop story. So it's official. It's official. As of today, uh, lawyers for Hunter Biden, the controversial son of President Joe Biden, appear to have admitted that some of the data associated with the story of his infamous laptop are, in fact, his. Uh, however, they stop short of admitting the laptop is <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so the data on the laptop is his. But the laptop, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Well, it's not his. The laptop's not his. What do you mean? Because he signed a contract that said within 90 days, the yeah. owner of the computer shop it, gets, it, it, it gets it's his. his. It's his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're That's... actually telling the technical truth. Mm. It's not his laptop. It's the owner of the computer store's laptop. With the information. Which okay. is why yeah, I see. Yeah. when they're trying to sue these people and criminalize Rudy Giuliani, the owner of the computer store, that's why it's not going to fucking work. Because he signed a paper that said, mm -hmm. hey, if I don't pick this up in 90 days, it becomes my property. So what they're doing here, as always, is a play on words. Yeah. Yeah. It isn't his laptop. Fuck, man. You just caught That's a great catch, bro. Yeah. Well, that's what's going on. That's crazy. Yeah. And what this also means, well, do you have more? Uh, I mean, I mean, we know the basis of that, but, you know, and then at the same time, it's also uh, just to remind people that the New York Times, this headline reads, New York Times waited more than 500 days before reporting it authenticated Hunter Biden laptop emails. And they're all in it. And apparently there's talks that even... The White House, and they all knew that this shit was coming out months did. before it came out. Of course they did. So, yeah, that is all I got, man. What, what do you got on this? Why do you think they created such a fucking... This was discovered, I believe, in December or November of 2019. Mm -hmm. So why do you think they fucking brought in and did the fucking PSYOP of COVID and fucking... You Russia know, distance formation. Yeah, bro. And yeah. created such a fuss. Closed all these businesses. Did all... They created a mess... To intentionally hide the fact of what's exposed on that laptop. And what's exposed on that laptop is a lot more than just dick pics and fucking Hunter Biden doing shit with underage girls, which is on there apparently. Mm -hmm. okay? Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. Uh, there's no, there's no, uh, I didn't see the girls' IDs, but they look pretty young, and most people agree with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's not the main story that's on there. The main story mm -hmm. that's on there is that the Biden family is completely compromised by foreign agents. Meaning they are taking money and getting paid from China, our fucking biggest enemy, okay? They're making all kinds of money from Ukraine where we're, spending, we're sending billions of dollars now, okay? And we have this scenario where, I don't know, what was it? Adam Schiff and how many, um, how, was it like 50-something uh, intelligent Intelligence community uh, uh, officials, officials yeah, signed, that letter. signed a letter that said it was Russian disinformation, and they all fucking knew when they signed it that it wasn't. They all knew that it was, it, they knew. They knew it. That's treason. You're protecting people who are guilty of selling out American interests for the sake of getting them in power. That's a fucking coup. Which makes you wonder, like, why was it so important for them to get them in power? I think it's apparently clear. I mean, every single move this motherfucker's done over the last fucking two years, two and a half years, whatever the fuck it's been, has been bad. Yeah. Every single thing he's done, he, he went in on the first day, he signed a shit ton of executive orders, and every single executive order that he signed then, everybody cheered for because they fucking hate the orange man. Right. But here's what they don't realize. That's what caused all the inflation. That's what caused the immigration. That's what perpetuated the crime. That's what keeps the situation going. This is about creating chaos so that we will eventually say, fuck, this is so fucked. This is so fucked up. Please, World Economic Forum, install your Great Reset agenda in here because this is so bad that I can't take it anymore. I'll take anything else. I don't care. Yeah. And that's what this is all about. And this is about demoralization. It's about creating the worst possible scenario in our country. It's about creating as much pain as humanly possible. And the good news is 
is that we have enough people, people who listen to this show, people who listen to the Rogan show, people who listen to like, there's a lot of people out there with big voices who have been told and understand what is actually going on now. So these people, it's the emperor has no clothes. They're out in the fucking open now doing these theatrics because their nuts are in a fucking bind and they don't know how to get out of it. And they're tiny. I'm just saying, man, like I wouldn't want to be them right now. Yeah. But here's what they're going to do, just so you know, and write this shit down. Uh, they're going to start a fucking massive war. And I've been saying this since the first fucking day they started with Ukraine. If you go back, a year ago, and I did the first episode on Ukraine, I was one of the first people to say this was fucking bullshit, and y'all fucking yelled at me about that too, just like you yelled at me about when I said COVID was bullshit, just like when I said the vaccine was bullshit, just like when I said all the shit was bullshit, y'all fucking yelled at me. You keep falling for the same play over and over and over again, and now we're to a point where I don't think people are falling for it anymore because they just tried to run it with these five cops in Memphis. Right. They tried right. to intentionally create a massive fucking race war w race riot and it didn't work because people are fucking people understand are over that man no it's not only that bro not only that people are over the racism yeah like bro everything's fucking racist bro when you when they go on tv and say that five black men beating another black man to death is white supremacy every white person in the world is like yeah fuck that every black person in the world is like i, I know bro but i'm just <laughs> saying like it ain't working no more no like no. The, the guilt that you used to try to put on us and say, oh, you're fucking this, or you're that, or you're this. No one cares. Mm -hmm. Fucking call me whatever the fuck you want, bro. That's bullshit. We all know it's bullshit. And everybody out there knows it's bullshit. Mm -hmm. So it's not working anymore. So now these people are what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to create a distraction or a diversion that is so fucking bad that it's going to truly touch us here. Okay? I think they're going to start a war with Russia and Ukraine with China and Taiwan and with Iran in the Middle East. And I think we're going to be fighting a three-front war, and I think there's a high potential likelihood that it's going to get tactically nuclear. I don't know that it will be totally destroying the entire United States, but I think there's a high likelihood that we could be attacked here on this soil. Yeah, And we'll, I don't think people realize that. We'll and if shit, you go yeah. back, if you've been listening to me, I've said this for years. I said, you fucking people better figure out that we're all on the same page, that we're all on the same team. It's not black, white, Asian. It's not gay, straight. It's not fucking left, right. We're all on the same team. And we're over here busy arguing with each other over the pigment of our fucking skin while our enemies are considering dropping motherfucking missiles and bombs on our country and taking it from us. And we're all going to learn this lesson real hard. I tried my best to warn people. I tried my best to tell people. But bro, People just, I, I don't know what else to say or do, man. This is why we haven't been doing so many CTIs because like I've kind of cooked the goose. Yeah. Like I've laid out the plan. What am I going to keep talking about? The same fucking plan. They're doing it. Mm -hmm. So that's my prediction. And I think that they're also on top of that because I think we covered this on the show too. Did we cover that exercise that Gates ran recently? Uh, yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah. You know, Gates ran a fucking another pandemic exercise just like in november december mm -hmm. the same thing he did uh with event 201 right before covid so if you think these people aren't f and and in this disease uh or this pandemic the model was a virus that was extremely deadly to children and so what i think they could potentially do because they have the capability to do it is to release another virus that is actual truly deadly and then blame all the people that said hey COVID was bullshit for it actually killing all these kids. Well, the CDC actually just announced another, they're, they're, they're tracking a, quote, potentially dangerous coronavirus variant, uh, calling it Orthrus CH.1.1. Bro, you had Jimmy Kimmel doing a fucking song on this new one fucking two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Like, no, nobody's falling for it. So how do you get people to fall for it again? Put some real shit out there. Put some real shit out there that actually kills motherfuckers right in front of their faces. And these people have the ability to do this. That's why I said, and I've been saying for a number of years now, if they're not caught and held accountable and demand accountability, they're going to continue to run the same play. And the reason they're going to continue to run the same play is because it fucking works for them. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't believe these people are so evil. Well, believe it because they fucking are. And they run the same play over and over and over again. Dude, when they ran COVID the first time, how many businesses closed that didn't reopen? Uh, it was a total of like 70%. Like I'm just saying, dude. 
how many how how much money shifted from the small middle class business owner, okay, from the small community to Amazon and Walmart and the biggest companies in the world? How much money and business shifted to them? They, they said did, like like two point three trillion. I don't know what bro. it was, but my point is, is that dude, they're gonna run that again because the whole goal is to have four or five companies that provide you with everything, and then. Everybody else be dependent on the government and these companies. Mm -hmm. And these companies are part of this communist playbook. They're all working together. Yeah. They're all part of the World Economic Forum. They give money to the Economic Forum. And people are confused about how this actually works. Well, how it works is this. The World Economic Forum gets in with the banks. The banks then dictate what strategies these companies have to implement in their culture, in, their, in, their, uh, you know, in, in the way they do business in order to qualify for the financing which they are dependent on. OK, then these companies put this shit into play, political correctness, um, overly, you know, all the social issues are, ex you know, if you don't abide by the uh, the narrative, you're fired and you're mm -hmm. kicked out and you're this and that. And so that's how they put all this shit into play. And then that culture then flows down into the actual real life. And this is why people don't understand that, like small businesses, you guys who uh, like would be interested in Arte and shit like that. Like you motherfuckers actually control the culture. And what we do is we have a problem right now where the small business entrepreneur is looking at the big companies of the world and adopting their way of politically correct. When, when in reality, bro, you shouldn't be imposing your opinion on your employees. They should be free to think and say and tell the truth and be who they are and basically be free fucking Americans and have a fucking job. Right. And if you allow that in your company, what will happen is, and you'll be amazed, is that people will actually gel like they do in America. You'll get a united front, and then you'll have a much more productive company. And by the way, because the trends of the consumer are shifting to companies like that, and they're getting away from these woke fuckers, uh, you have a massive opportunity. Can't lose. No, you, you, you have a massive advantage over the, everybody else by doing that. And I've been saying, this is not new. I said this a dozen times over the last three or four years. And it's happening. It's real shit. So, you know, when we think about communism and we think about how it's implemented, it's implemented, it's been implemented very slow. Mm -hmm. It's a long game, bro. Right? They took the Pledge of Allegiance out of the schools. Can't do that. That's offensive. Mm -hmm. Okay? They started giving trophies for 17th fucking place. Oh, everybody needs to be recognized. All right? So you took away people's pride in their country and then you took away their pride in actually achieving. All right. Then you move on and you start this political correct culture where it's like, oh, well, you can't say this because fucking, you know, even though it's true, it offends this person. Mm -hmm. Right. So then what happens is people start censoring themselves. All right. Then we introduce cancel culture. So now if a company or a personality or a human being or whoever says something outside of the line of of whatever the narrative is, we fucking cancel them. They won't censor I'm themselves. never buying from them again. Exactly. OK. Yeah. Cancel culture was introduced by the tech companies, by the media. It was a weapon. It's intentional, all right? The silent majority. Let's tell people that it's virtuous to stay silent. And while they're staying silent, we can encroach and take every single fucking bit of their freedom. Like all of these things are part of what's happening. And what's happening now is we are at the end and enough people have woken up where they're resisting it and they say, fuck that. But these people are so locked in that they don't have a choice. They can't return. They can't go backwards. So Americans really need to understand the potential of what it could take to actually maintain our country. It, it, and it could be violence. It's on our doorstep. It, it's just real talk. I don't, I don't know how, I don't know where people are with that. You know, we get a lot of people to say that shit, you know, but I mean, dude, it's getting closer and closer to that point where people are going to realize like, holy fuck, we're going to have to fucking fight for this country. Yeah. Legitimately. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, dude, I say all the time, personal excellence is the ultimate rebellion because it is, okay? But these people are getting so much power that we might be in a position where I don't know how, I don't, like, dude, the police, the police and the military could easily stop this shit. They could stand the fuck up and say, we're not doing that, mm -hmm. okay? But they're not doing that. So I, you know, I don't know what the fuck it's going to take. I would almost argue that that's like a, a natural byproduct, right? Like, I mean, yes, personal excellence is the ultimate rebellion. But that creates a rebellious society. Yeah. So they're going to challenge. You know what I'm saying? Look, so, man, I mean, it's real simple. Everything that they want you to be, you should be the opposite. 
Mm-hmm. They want you fucking fat and unhealthy. You should take pride in being fit. They want you broke, become wealthy. They want you uh, to hate your neighbor. Don't hate your neighbor. Love your neighbor. They, they, these, the personal excellence is such a powerful concept. And the reason they shit on it so hard is because when you become personally excellent, you are no longer part of their system. You can't you, use you. Yes. Yeah. And they, you, you're not dependent on them, so they, they have no power. And that, so, you know, that's the reality of what needs to happen because mm-hmm. it's a cultural issue that's happening. Com- yeah. The only way communism comes to be is if we culturally degrade everything that this country stands for, which they've done a pretty effective job at doing. Yeah. All right. So we as individuals have a collective responsibility to be the best that we can. But also, you know, I think we're getting to a point where like this is like legit dangerous. Yeah, for sure. I mean, well, we're seeing that right now, actually. Let's, let's just move right to our third and final headline. Everybody's been talking about it. Um, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's fucking China. Um, this headline reads, China, a uh, Chinese spy balloon over central U.S. will be in U.S. airspace for a few days, Pentagon says. That's, this is pretty fucking dangerous. It's demoralization. It's, they, it's they, unreal. They, they are basically telling you, like, look, China can fucking fly a spy drone over your fucking country. We're not going to do shit about it. Yeah, we won't. Yeah. We don't want to hurt you guys. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, <clears throat> like I said, I, I know everybody's, it's a massive story going on right now. Um, but let's just kind of like, you know, decipher what the fuck's going on. So Defense Department spokesperson, uh, Brigadier General Pat Ryder, said Friday that the Chinese surveillance balloon hovering over the United States has moved to the central part of the country, but declined to get into specifics about its location. Uh, Ryder said North American Aerospace Defense Command is closely monitoring the balloon's location and that it is moving eastward across the U.S. Quote, the balloon continues to move eastward and is currently over the center of the continent's United States. Again, we currently assess that the balloon does not present a military or physical threat to people on the ground at this time. Uh, He says the balloon is currently flying at about 60,000 feet above sea level. That's higher than civilian aircraft fly. Now, the National Weather Service in Kansas City, Missouri, posted photos. This was about uh, 15 to 20 minutes ago. Um posted photos of a large balloon visible from their office in Pleasant Hill at the KC Metro that appeared to be headed southeast. Quote, we have confirmed that it is not a NWS weather balloon, um, NWS Kansas City said. Um, And here's the weird thing, right? Um, It also is coming out that this balloon is maneuverable, okay? Most weather balloons, they kind of just go up and they'll use the fucking jet stream to move around. This one is able to fucking change its course. Um, and it's changed direction a few times. Um, and at the same time, you know, China came out and saying that their spy balloon is just a civilian airship. Um, the Chinese foreign ministry on Friday initially denied any knowledge of a huge surveillance balloon floating through the American airspace. But then they came out and claimed that it was just a weather research airship. Uh, the P- Pentagon responded to baffled questions about why the incredibly well-funded U.S. military was unable to detect, thwart, or destroy the balloon by claiming that attacking it could jeopardize people on the ground in Montana. And as that has also happened, Canada just announced that they also have one going on in their airspace. Yeah, they launched it from their own country. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Canada's already aligned with China. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and, and so apparently Biden, and this is, this is CNN, like I said, everybody's talking about it. This is a CNN article. They've, they've been doing some reporting on it. They're saying that Biden uh, was briefed about this on Tuesday. Um, he was briefed on Tuesday on suspected Chinese surveillance balloon, White House says. Um, and the president has since, quote, continued to receive regular briefings and updates from the national security team. Um, after it was reported that Biden was advised by top officials, including Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, not to take action to bring the balloon down due to the risk uh, of people on the ground. Um, here's a reverse backward trajectory of the balloon. It does show it originated from China. Um, but you can see the dramatic change of trajectory it's having. And this is what the forecast, uh, forecast to project, uh, projection is right now. Yeah, it's flying directly over Whitman Air Force Base, which mm-hmm. is here in Missouri, which is where all B-2 f- stealth missions are flown from. Mm-hmm. All of them. And it's flying directly over the top of it. It's also going over D.C. Yeah. You know? Trump came out and had a comment. You know, he's saying to shoot it down. He he's the right. Truth. 
Shoot he's down fucking right. You know, that's that's the thing. If it's just the weather. Bro, these people the are all bought and paid for. They, if this isn't an example of why the fuck this is Hunter laptop shit is important. This is what this is why. We had a fucking general in the United States military go up on stage today fielding that guy you just showed. I don't yeah. know who that is. That's he, uh, Gen uh, Brigadier General uh, Ryder. Well, this yeah. fucking asshole is up there answering questions and the reporter says, well, don't the people of the United States have a right to know what's going on? And he goes, well, they have a right to look up in the air and see the balloon. Mm -hmm. Man, yeah, fuck she, you. She was asking about specifics, like yeah. transparency, location, yeah, details. Yeah, fuck updates. you, dude. Yeah. Like these people are selling us down the fucking drain. And here we are, this guy who's supposedly some powerful fucking human, you know, patriot general for our country telling us, fuck you guys. Mm -hmm. Like our own military is not even looking out for our interests. Like, you guys are fucking, would you forget your fucking oath, bro? That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Or are you just getting the fucking money from these motherfuckers in China? It's fucking disgusting, dude. Well, yeah, I think too, bro, that like on the military side, the generals, they want war, bro. That's a massive profit machine. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, yeah, we can ask that, no problem. Bro, look, I'm staying by my, my, my personal speculation that these people are completely compromised. They're in our office. They're destroying America intentionally. And this is just another part of that. Yeah. It's very clear that our government does not act in the interests of our citizens. Very fucking clear. Otherwise, there wouldn't be the crime happening in democratic cities. There wouldn't be tens of millions of fucking people coming across the border. Pfizer wouldn't be allowed to do the shit they do. Um, basically all this shit. You know, they wouldn't continue to print money and send it overseas. By the way, did you fucking see what happened yesterday with all the Ukrainian high-ranking uh, officials got caught stealing the money that we're sending them? Largest resi mass resignation in the history of Ukraine. Bro. These, these people are not Americans. They are not Americans. They are selling us down the drain. They're selling your future down the drain and they're selling your fucking kids' future down the drain. And if it doesn't stop, we will never have a free country ever again. It'll never happen. And these dudes are doing that for a few million bucks. Think about that. Yeah. What would it take for you to sell out your entire fucking country? Money? Like, bro, that's unbelievable to me. Like, you're going to take money and sell all the people that you're supposed to fucking protect and support and facilitate life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness down the fucking drain for money? Like, bro. And that's the thing, do they not These realize? are the worst kind of people. Yeah, well, that's the thing, because, like, bro, do they not realize that, you know, if this shit gets installed, they're no longer going to be useful either. No, they don't understand that. They you know what no I'm saying? They have so, no yeah, I get, yeah, here's a couple of million, because what we stand to they make... Like, you'll, no, you'll be done, too. They have no understanding of that. They don't, they don't get it. They think they'll be safe. Yes. They think they'll have free shit. They think this will be a utopia. They think that, like, everything will be free and, you know, tax the rich. And they think that, like, the rich is going to continue to work to fucking pay for their fucking useless asses. Now, I'm talking I'm, about even, like, the Bidens and, and like, all these fucking, man. you know what I'm saying? They're I'm not going to be safe I either. Too. I am, too. It's, it's fucking insane, dude. And then Biden's up there on TV today talking about, how the reporter asked him, they said, uh, why don't you take any responsibility for the economic yeah. situation and inflation? He's like, because I inherited that. Yeah, inflation was here before I got here, man. Okay, motherfucker. <laughs> like, bro, these people are straight up liars. They're straight up fucking liars. They created a pandemic and intentionally closed. Bro, and you guys said, well, Trump did that. Oh, he did? Because I pretty much remember every fucking official, every fucking news agency, every fucking media outlet, every Hollywood celebrity demanded that we shut the country down. Mm -hmm. And they put all this pressure on this man and they said, okay, well, 15 days. And then where Trump fucked up was he handed over the spotlight to Anthony fucking rat Fauci, right. okay, who then took it and ran with it and they fucked up our whole country. So let's, let's be real. You know, your job growth, like, dude, he's, he's on fucking TV bragging about gas prices the other day. And some dude asked, well, when are we getting the gas prices that uh, we had in Trump era? Right. And, and he fucking had some smart ass shit. To, bro, look at the way he talks to people. Look right. at the way Jen Psaki talks to people. Look at the way uh, Green, Pierre yeah, yeah. fucking talks to people. These people fucking hate you. They fucking hate us.
They don't give a fuck if we ask questions because they fucking are doing what they're doing intentionally. You guys say, oh, they're just dumb. They're not dumb. They're, you're dumb. Right. They're smart. You guys, if you guys walk around, you think, oh, it's just some feeble old man. No, Joe is the perfect guy to put in position because he appears to be a feeble old man who's dumb. And you motherfuckers buy it hook, line, and sinker every fucking day. God, these people are fucking up our country. They're so stupid. No, they're not stupid. You're stupid because you fucking bought it and you voted for them. Well, these, I can't believe how stupid Kamala is. You really think she's that stupid, bro? She's acting. She's acting. These people are acting. It's frustrating, dude. That, that balloon should be shot the fuck down. Yeah. And then a fucking, uh, you know, like, dude, look. That's a, here's, China's not going to allow us look, to fly fucking balloons over We there. need to get back to Vlad the Impaler days. Like, if you fuck with us, your head ends up on a fucking stake on the front of the White House lawn. And we take pictures of it. We post on Instagram and on Twitter and everywhere else. It says, hey, you fuck with us. This is what fucking happens to you. That's where we need to get. Because we're vulnerable right now. And people don't understand that. You guys are going to think a lot differently when there's a bunch of fucking NATO troops and Chinese troops all over the country trying to take your guns. Because that's going to be the move. The move isn't going to be, because uh, they have to disarm us. Mm -hmm. The move isn't going to be uh, some legislation about guns. When the, when the mask finally comes off, uh, and by the way, there's people openly on the left talking about this. Oh, you guys are going to find out how hard it is whenever there's a, you're facing the strongest militaries in the world and coming to get your guns. Like, yeah. Oh, see, what? Yeah, there was a tweet the other day. I can't remember where, where I saw it, but it was basically like, you know, you guys will fold. You will fold because the military, these powerful militaries are going to be brought in to disarm you. And we won't have, like, these people are so fucking stupid. They don't understand the only reason we're not a third world country is because we have fucking guns. Like, that's how fucking stupid they are. Bro, it's frustrating, man. It's frustrating as fuck. You know, and people fucking continue to think conspiracy, conspiracy, conspiracy. You're right. It is a conspiracy. It's just not a conspiracy theory. And this, this fucking asshole, this general brigadier fuckface, <laughs> deserves to be fucked. Like, bro, you're going to go up there and, and, and literally fucking tell people too bad, so sad. We're not going to tell you what the fuck's going on. We got a Chinese spy aircraft over our fucking country. Our military is supposed to protect us. Not fucking work with them. Right. I can tell you this, bro. If I was running shit, I'd be running a lot differently. A lot differently. And we wouldn't be fucked with. We wouldn't have none of this shit happening. No. But everybody wants to argue over fucking DeSantis and Trump. Like, you think that's going to fucking solve it. Yeah. Bro, nothing, no, nothing that we have going on here will be solved without drastic fucking measures. Yeah. That's what people have to prepare. Because that's how we got here. People have to prepare their mind for that. Oh. We're, we're moving beyond the realm of peaceful and easy resolution here. And I think that's intentional. Yeah. You oh, know, if sure. you go back oh, into 1930s sure. Germany, bro, the Weimar Republic, the, the, that, that, if you go back and read about it, okay, that's what's happening now in our country. It's happening right now. And you know what happened yeah. after that? World War fucking two. There's no coincidences, bro. History repeats itself. We're going to have some major fucking life-changing shit happen if everybody can't fucking get these motherfuckers out of, the, out of the way. And I don't know how to do that. But you guys didn't like the fucking orange guy. And you don't like the orange guy because he was fucking in with Russia. And now it turns out that Adam Schiff and all the people who fucking, the 50 intelligence officers that signed that piece of paper saying that for sure, this was Russian disinformation and that it was fake. Uh, they helped install these fucking people into our government. Oh, yeah. And they lied. They're complicit in that. Yes. And the reason you hate Trump beyond his poor bedside manner, if you even think it's poor, I think it's fucking funny. Um, the reason you hate him is all based off the Russia collusion, which has now been shown to be a complete fucking lie and completely fabricated by our three-letter agencies and completely fabricated by other politicians who wanted to do anything they can to keep this man from running. What do you think they're going to do for the next two years to keep him from running again and winning? Yeah, no, they're already spinning that up, bro. bro I saw this uh, article. I think it's it going to get 
way worse. It was an MSNBC article. They said, legit, they said, now this is going to sound morbid, morbid, but this is how we, this is how Trump won't take the 2024 office. And it was like, basically, he's just, we're just going to hope that he dies. He has to die. I was like, what the fuck, bro? Well, they'll kill him if they have to. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's why I'm, they're already pre con like, They're fucking putting it out there. I'm surprised they haven't. Already, yeah. 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 Or at least, like, fucking legit tried to. But, you know, like, dude, this, th you know, people say, oh, I fucking want so-and-so to run and so-and-so to run and so-and-so to run. Motherfucker, you need, you need a fucking wrecking ball. To come in and fucking run. No, we don't have time to play politics. That's what you need. You need no. someone who's going to fucking correct this shit, pull the Band-Aid off, and straighten everything out in one fucking day and let it sort itself out. Yeah. Bro, people are fucking sick of this shit. And I guarantee you, bro, if they fucking steal this shit again or fucking run these plays again, not only is it ain't, it's not going to work, they're going to end up, these people are end up on those fucking front yard, like I said. Yeah. yeah. Well, guys... That was uh, our third and final headline. It's time for our final segment of the show, as always. They're going to try to fucking get people back in line, bro. They're going to release oh, that yeah. pandemic, and they're going to have a war happening. To get people, get people back that's inside. That's my opinion. Yeah. They're yeah. going to fucking kill some, a lot of people with an actual virus that's very deadly if this continues to push this way. Because that's their only option. The yeah. only option is to do that so that fucking they can escape the accountability for the crimes they've already committed. Yeah. If the whole world's in a nuclear war, these people aren't going to be held accountable. Mm -mm. They know that. They fucking know that. And not only this, they're going to make a fuck ton more money. While we all suffer, we send our fucking kids over there to fight for them. These people are fucks. And we need new leadership in this country. We don't need these old fucking bought and paid for, you know, uh, secret handshake, fucking cross skull and bones motherfuckers. We need actual Americans in our government. Everybody knows what needs to happen, bro. Yep. Well, guys, that was our third and final headline. It's time for our final segment of the show. As always, we have thumbs up or dumb as fuck. And uh, we show a headline. It's either get one of those two, uh, two options. And with that being said, our headline reads, 30-year-old dog named World's Oldest uh, by Guinness World Records. Uh, so Guinness World Records in introduced Bobby, the world's oldest dog ever. Bobby is 30 years. Bro, listen, that's Bobby. Is it Bobby? Yeah, it's Bobby. And that's just some white people wrote that shit. So, but I fuck, okay. Ebonics fucked that up a little know. bit. Bobby. Is that how you guys spell that? No, man. You know how it is. It's all these. That's like the Jackson. Yes. You know, it's guys, all the these Braxtons. people that think they got to fucking make these goofy ass spellings yeah. to be unique, not realizing <laughs> you're handicapping your kid <laughs> to go through their whole entire life to have to spell their yeah, name I'm, every single time someone asked it. Undiagnosed dyslexia, so, bro. <laughs> so, they, so, that they, so they can feel cool. So they can feel cool. So Jackson with yeah. five X's. Right, right. X, 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 X. Yeah. yeah. Like. So this bro, is like Latinx. Bro, yeah. it's so they can feel cool. Yeah. It's the well, same yeah. reason fucking there's all these trans children and shit, bro. These children <laughs> are fucking, these children are manufactured by propaganda. Yeah. And, and, and so people can virtue signal about it. Like we're, ha we're ruining children's lives, ruining people's lives for fucking people, uh, grown adults, personal feelings. Yeah. So they can be cool with their friends. Like, dude, this is fucking disgusting. Yeah. Like we deserve a fucking reckoning. There should be a rapture. Like I, I, At this no, point. <laughs> I'm being serious, dude. Like I, I hope that yeah. Jesus comes back and fucking does what he needs to do. Yeah. Because dude, it's it's disgusting. Yeah. It's disgusting. So Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> That's gotta be Bobby. I'm betting on Bobby. So so 30 uh, years old, man. Yeah, 30 years old. Okay. 200 uh and he's 30 years and then 266 days old. Guinness said in a statement Thursday that the Portuguese dog took the record uh, from a 23-year-old dog named Spike. Now, that's no special Spike. That's just Spike, right? No, that's Spike. Okay. All right. <laughs> I don't know if it was Spike. That was Otis's name before we got him. The Spike? Yeah. Really? Yeah. When he was on the little, uh, like, the, the website that we found him on, Yeah. his name was Spike. We named him Otis. See, Spike doesn't even sound right. Otis sounds like right. Yeah, but he, he has, like, the Spike personality. Like, sometimes mm. he's just a little shithead. That's when he's being Spike. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. Uh, but he, he took the reins after the 23-year-old uh, dog named Spike, who was named the world's oldest living dog in January. So Bobby, Guinness said, has broken the nearly century-old record for the oldest dog ever. 
That was set by Bluey, an Australian cattle dog who lived 29 years, five months between uh, 1910 and 1939. Bobby is 30 years, 266 days old as of February 1st. Uh, he has lived his entire life with the Costa family in the rural village. Maybe it is Bobby. They're in Portugal. Uh, listen, I knew my yeah. ancestors were like tapping into me a little bit. Bobby? I, it just felt right. Okay, well, keep going right. with that. It's all right. Whatever you think, man. <laughs> I, I thought that was some fucking progressive yeah. fucking yeah. Jackson, Jackson 17 X's. X's. Speak a. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe it is Bobby. I don't fucking know. Yeah, so he's, he's in Portugal, man. Um, he's a purebred Raffiero do Alentijo, which is a breed of livestock guardian dog with an average life expectancy of 12 to 14 years. Um, funny part is, uh, according to the Costa family, Baba, uh, whoever, Bobby, uh, was never chained or attached to any leash and has always roamed the farmland and forest near the Costa home. Bobby has always eaten human food rather than standard dog food, according uh, to Lionel Costa. Uh, here's a picture of Bobby. Oh, man. He doesn't even look that old. No, he doesn't, man. He really, he act like not, there's I mean, not a whole lot tell of he's a little, he's, You could tell he's, a, you know, he looks he's a little, little tired. Rusty. You still got a little red rocket down there, bro. He's still getting getting his bonus. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like he's, he's good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing good, man. Look at him. He's smiling. He's, he's all right. Boner. He's, he's all right. He's fucking man. great. Yeah. So there you go, Bobby. Happy birthday. Hey, you know what, man? He looks really good. <laughs> he does for yeah. thirty, bro. Thirty years old, man. That's crazy. That's a that's an old dog. He's a big dog too. He's not like a one of them little like yeah. yappy dogs. And that, apparently like, forever. He can still teach him some new tricks. You know what I'm saying? He's got that rear rocket ready to go. Yeah. Well, he said, fuck around, find out. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm armed and dangerous. <laughs> yeah, there ain't man. no fucking 2A around here. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, what, what we got? Thumbs I up? I think it's awesome. Yeah, that's fucking cool, man. Yeah, man. That's I hope cool. he lives another 30 years. That's the biggest problem with dogs, man. Is that, uh, It's a short life yeah. cycle. Yeah, man. It's fucking hard, you know? And this is coming from someone who only has dogs and doesn't have kids. It's yeah. like every time you lose one, it's like losing your fucking kid again. Yeah. <clears throat> it's fucking horrible, but it doesn't outweigh the, 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 the joy of having them. While they're you know, here. like a lot yeah. of people, you know, they're like, fuck, I don't, I don't want to have another dog, but honestly, dude, like there's so many dogs out there that need homes of people that are going to love them. I mean, like, I think you're doing, I think like, that's like the only thing that replaces that, 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 that hurt almost, man. But, I can't imagine what it would be like to have a dog for 30 years and then have it fucking die. That's what I'm saying, yeah, man. Like, like, the dog's older than me. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. He's got a bigger wiener, too. Well, that's the bait. <laughs> that's the bait. Look, he ain't look, afraid look, to show look, it. Look here, Bobby. All right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, guys, Andy, that's all I got, man. Yeah. All right, guys. We'll pay the fee. Don't be a hoe. Share the show. <laughs> <laughs>